think if we're looking at week two in particular, um, then yeah, like the idea of the individual individual is a really interesting concept to consider in mm. the digital space. I only came across that myself about five years ago. Was it, it from it emerged? One of my colleagues, uh, Jack Taylor, put me onto the work of Marilyn Strathern. Um, she had done work in New Guinea on yeah. uh, Highlanders there. I think Mount Hagen was the area. And it was really one of the more challenging concepts I've come across in anthropology. Um, and in some ways I kind of struggled to teach it. It took me a long time to even learn it. What do you think yeah. are some of the easier ways to, to get into the concept? Yeah, and look, I, I've had the same kind of struggles and um, as you as you mentioned the kind of idea of individual and individual emerged in the Pacific anthropology space as well so I kind of felt quite guilty for not getting it instinctively mm. um, but the idea that people have kind of different forms of their self um, and that you know, in this in the Western context, we we see ourselves as ourself, yeah. but in the Pacific, um, you are much more a member of your community, and there are different aspects of your of your self that can go in different directions and be represented in different ways. Mm. Um, there are two things actually that um, that help me to understand that better, um, and. One of them is the concept of sociocentrism, um, which is used by Karen Bryson. And that basically just says that um, in, st in the Pacific in particular, um, but also in many other parts of the world, um, it is people's social engagement that gives them a sense of identity, as opposed to in the West, your identity is much more configured around who am I as an individual, how can I achieve my dreams? Yeah. These sort of things. The the other concept that actually really helped me came from another page. Yeah, just, just pause you for a second. Yeah. So the first one you talk about that's sociocentric, is that right? That's yeah, so yeah, so S O C I O centrism. Mm -hmm. Um in cultures where let's say a sense of individual is more prominent than a sense of individual we could also categorise those cultures as sociocentric, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and one, of my, um, one of the young people that I interviewed for my PhD actually said, um, I remember this amazing quote, you have these times where you interview people, you know, and they say something and a light bulb goes off in your head and you're like, I'm definitely using that. And I still remember the specific time that he made this quote and he said, in the Pacific, it's hard to conceive of ourselves when no one talks about the self. Because even at the household level, you talk about your house, you talk about your village, you talk about your clan or your extended family. Um, you don't talk about yourself. And, and even in areas like um, when people are considering careers in the Pacific, a lot of the time, people's career paths are kind of decided by the extended family and it's about how can you benefit the family, not how can you achieve your own goals and ambitions. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I interrupted you. You're going to have the second one there. You said. You know. Yeah. So the, the second one comes from another PhD student at Latrobe, John Gannon. Um, yeah, yeah. And he introduced me to uh, the concept of homo ludens through Johan Husinger. Mm. Um, which I'm not entirely across homo ludens, but part of my understanding um, of the of the limited reading I've done is that um, is that individuals are motivated by a sense of play, and one of the ways that we play is that we play different roles in society depending yeah. on the context we're in. So, speaking to you right now, I'm playing the role of a colleague discussing anthropology. Um, if I go out into my lounge room and engage with my dogs, I'm playing a completely different role to them. If I speak to my parents, I'm playing a different role. 
and that we all have these different identities, which in a sense can be individualized. Yeah. Um, we can divide our, ourself into all of these different ways and we, and we can move about these roles seamlessly. Yeah. What, what's fascinating for me about the idea is that you are nothing else but that. I think since about the 1500s in Europe with the Protestant revolution in particular, we started to like turn inwards to ourselves and try and find who am I? What am I? And we're assuming yeah. that there is an I, there's something that responds to the, the corresponds to the, to the word I or the letter I, I should say. Whereas, you know, in, in that analogy you were making, it's sort of like you are not, Aiden is nothing but the, the colleague talking to me, the master of his dogs, the child of his parents. Yeah. Uh, and what, why it was so hard for me to get my head around that idea, I think was the people I started reading in anthropology were in the 60s and 70s. That was my first sort of reading experience. And they'd all been influenced by a crop of people in the 40s and 50s who had books like Self and Society, Individual and Community. And they sort of, and I remember actually reading one book that was very popular, but came later in the 80s called oh, Social Construction of Reality. Anyway, in all those books, it's like, okay, we'll start with the individual and how does the individual, how do we build up a society around individuals and stuff? And what this idea that Strathern or, or, or others have come up with too, in, independently or, or maybe influenced by her, sort of flips that around. Yeah. And suddenly you start off with, I mean, how could you even get a sense of individual if, if we understand Aiden as just, well, just sounds like it minimises it, but... Uh, only consisting in being a colleague, yeah, uh, uh, master of dog, and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, I suppose in pertinent to this this subject, then is like I, I find it really interesting to consider how the digital space um, allows people who otherwise see themselves as individual to act in ways that kind of conform to to the individual sense um and, and i suppose how, how did you come across that concept at first and 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 what were your immediate reactions to it well when i read the dales card article uh i you know it's sometimes really embarrassing to admit you, some a thought hadn't occurred to you before when it, afterwards it seems really obvious and i had one of those moments because uh, because after reading strathern i started to think about individual operating in other readings I'd had, I'd done in anthropology and all of them were in non-Western context. And I was like, wow, this is great. It's opening up all these ideas in non-Western societies. And I, I came away with this model. Okay. Um, Mount Hagen, Pacific societies, Indonesia, where I do research there in those societies will say individual is the primary concept of self. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the West it's individual. And then when I read Dale's guy, he's like, well, hang on, even in Mount Hagen, there's also individual also operates. Maybe it's not as powerful or strong as a sense of individual. And conversely, in the West, we hardly even use that word anymore in anthropology, but anyway, in, in <laughs> the West, it's uh, we, we also have an idea of individual. It's just that it's less prominent. So when you when you when you are on Facebook and you promote this sense of self, um, often you know, like my own Facebook, I have like a group of friend, group of friends, group of family. And I'm going for likes, going for, you know, loves and, you know, comments yeah. and stuff like that and judging how successful I am. I'm starting to see myself, as Dalsgaard says, um, not as a kind of interior, um, as an interior atomistic true self that I've got to uncover, but I start to see myself as, I de identify myself outside of this and in likes and comments and so on. Yeah. I'm really interested as well um, because that Dalsgaard article um, is it's a few years old now. I mean, it, it mentions MySpace as kind of the equivalent of Facebook um, in terms of market share. So that kind of dates it a, a little bit. But um, I think the concepts are still ring true. But what I'm interested in is um, also how people have different individual selves across different platforms as well. Because I know for myself that I have a Facebook account and I have a Twitter account um, and the way that I engage across different platforms is really different. And the communities that I engage with across different platforms is really different as well. Um, so I'm, I'm really intrigued by how that impacts on 
um, different aspects of self. Did he mention that that observation you've made in the article that you recall? Because I can't recall him making that observation. No, that no. So that forms allow for a different sense of individual self. No, so that that's something that I'm now kind of yeah yeah. On. Um, so what do you reckon? Like uh, that's really interesting. I mean. I guess students who are watching us this presentation, and hope they're not too bored by us yabbering on like this. But uh, this is the kind of thing that we, that when I'm marking, I look for students to do, or in my own work, I have to I kind of have to value add. Um, yeah, yeah. Top top students will typically do that kind of thing you've just done there, um, and and that's the that's the next step to becoming a scholar, which is, you know, looking at the theories and kind of combining them in interesting ways, or seeing different. You know, doing different things with the theory. Well, it's one thing just to apply it, like I like I said before. Got the idea of individual, then I looked at my own field work and you can see people. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, as individuals there. So I was very good at applying the idea, but the next step, of course, is doing what you're doing here, which is um, developing the idea, being creative with it, or elaborating the the, the idea or the concept. Um, and you know. In a sense, it comes to me like a curveball because I don't know what to make of it. It seems like a really interesting idea. I suddenly I was rushing through my mind, thinking back to like a this theories of the nineteen eighties, like Deleuze and Guattari and Schizophrenia <laughs> and a thousand plateaus and things like that. But that's uh, what, what are your thing? Where, where, where do you think you go with that theoretically, or where do you think, generally? Well, um, is that, so, so what excites me about that is um, what, one of the concepts that emerges through. So I, I kind of, I have two research sites. I have my youth stuff and then I actually do work with a group of leaders in the Pacific. Okay, let, let, the youth, uh, where are they located in physical space? Are they in Australia or? No, so they're in Fiji and Solomon Islands primarily. The, um, if we study, oh, that's not your PhD research, right? That's my PhD research. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I've been involved in another project with leaders in the Pacific. And so we're talking um, politicians, heads of um, private sector organisations, heads of UN bodies, so real high flyers. Um, and that's in the... Pacific wide, is that right? Sorry, I should drop. That's Pacific wide, yeah. And that's in the international development space. So it's not directly related to anthropology, but my work kind of crosses between development and anthropology. Um, and what I'm finding in the development space is more often than not now I'm asking questions that I'm not, that I'm not able to answer um, and that I don't even have an instinctive answer for. Um, and it's actually one thing that I really look for in students as well is being able to recognise that you don't have an answer. Yeah. So, um, so I get really excited by thinking to myself, okay, well, what does... What does Dalsgaard's um, insights offer in this slightly new space, in this, um, in the evolved um, social media landscape? Yeah. Um, and I get excited by the fact that I don't know, and there's there's the opportunity to explore, and also the opportunity to be incorrect. Um, yeah. So kind of have conversations with with people and explore it. A little bit and maybe take a position in a conversation that I'm not 100% certain of but really work it to the fullest extent and then take another position in yeah. a different conversation. Yeah I think that's um, part of uh, the, the, the sort of university way of arguing like you know an argument in a pub one person takes one position one person yeah. and they hold on to it tenaciously until the end but if you can be uh at university i think uh, uh, one of the nice things is you, you're allowed to say well i actually i started this conversation holding this position but now i want to change my position i'm going to hold this one and see what see where this takes us um yeah and i think i think that's really a better way to uh to develop knowledge by being flexible not and not having your ego too tied up in it going, okay, well, that didn't work. I'll try something else. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's been really nice to chat today. I think um, uh, that idea has also got my head spinning. <laughs> <Probably> not, <laughs> I can't talk too much because it is very interesting. I mean, we, I have seen the stuff about people using different platforms in different ways. That's been yeah. an observation. But when you put that together with the idea of the individual, yeah. uh, this kind of splintered self, that's really, it's sort of like a, kind of like an exponential thing, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gone off in all kinds of uh, 
uh, all kinds of potential there. Anyway, uh, hopefully we can talk more next week about uh, the themes that come up in the next week of the course, but thanks for taking the time today. Not at all, mate. It's been great. Thanks for this. Uh, hang on, I'll stop that. <laughs>